I asked a question on social media. What do you think of when you see a recipe called company potatoes? And I got some amazing answers. So I developed a recipe around the ingredients that people expected to see, and I made two different toppings for these potatoes. Both are amazing. Welcome to the Salt and Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. Today's recipe is for company potatoes. Now, I know a lot of people have probably heard of company potatoes, or they call them funeral potatoes, or you know, there's different names, different versions. This recipe uses uh, cut up real potatoes, not hash browns. So I just wanna get that out of the way. I know there's versions with hash browns, that's not what I'm doing today. These are basically a mashed potato with tons of flavor, and they're really, um, on the moisture side because company potatoes, what you want to have there is something that you can make ahead of time and they reheat beautifully. And so that's what this recipe is. All right, so let's dive right in. I'm going to use the Ninja Foodie six and a half quart. You could use the five quart. You could use the eight quart. You could use any pressure cooker you wanted. You could even cook your potatoes on the stove like you normally do and then proceed with the rest of the recipe. It'd be perfectly fine. But the pressure cooker makes it so, so simple. So the first thing I need to do is get my potatoes ready. And I wait until just before I put them in the pot to peel and dice them so that they don't turn brown. You don't want to put your potatoes in water to soak, uh, you know, like you would maybe if you're making hash browns or something like that, because you don't want the starch to be pulled out. You want the starch to be in the potato. That's what helps make it nice and creamy and just delicious, okay? So let me go ahead and peel these. These are white potatoes, which I went to an auction with my mom and I ended up with a lot of potatoes. So I'm using those. My preference usually is russet, but these are just a plain white potato, probably grown in Pennsylvania. They are absolutely wonderful for mashing, but you could use russet. You could use a combination of russet and Yukon gold. You could use any potatoes you want in this recipe. It's not a real fluffy potato, so you don't need to really worry about which kind of potato you use. Just use between two and a half, three pounds for this amount of ingredients. Now, it's a recipe that's super easy to cut in half, super easy to uh, double, so you can, you know, increase it if you needed to. This makes a lot of potatoes. All right, so let me go ahead and peel them, dice them, and then I'm just gonna throw them into the inner pot there, and we'll get on to putting in the rest of the ingredients. All right, so now our potatoes are in the pot. They are cut into about a one inch cube. You can cut them as small or as big as you want. That's no problem. It just will affect the pressure cook time. So if you wanted to pressure cook for a little less time, cut them smaller. If you wanted to pressure cook for a longer time, cut them a little bit bigger. That'd be perfectly fine. I don't recommend though cutting them too big or putting them in a hole because of the other ingredients we're gonna add in, you don't want that under pressure for like 30 minutes, okay? So we're gonna go under pressure for seven minutes minutes. If you cut them smaller, do five minutes. It would be for perfectly fine. All right, real quick, before I move on to the rest of the ingredients, I wanted to talk to you about the potato skins, okay? So these potato skins are extremely thin, and I will end up just using them for compost. However, if you use russets and you want to peel your potatoes, because that's optional too. You could cube them up and leave the peels in. It'd be perfectly fine. Um, if, but if you wanted to peel them and do something with the skins, you can air fry them and they are amazing little crispy potato skin treats. I mean, amazing. And I put them on top of my potato soup. I'll link to that recipe below the video, okay? So you can make these uh, potato skins. They are so amazing. Not the stuffed ones like you think of, but these are like little air fried treats. Oh my gosh, amazing. All right, let's get on to the rest of this. Okay, so for the seasoning, I have one teaspoon of fine grind sea salt, half of a teaspoon of black pepper, pepper, and I put that in now and I just sprinkle it right over the potatoes. Pepper's optional, salt is pretty important, but don't go overboard with the salt at this point because we also have some cheeses that are going in there and that will increase the salt level. So I found one teaspoon for three pounds is good. Then I taste them at the end. If they need a little adjustment, I'll add a little bit more. All right, one celery stalk. I know, how weird in mashed potatoes. I'm gonna talk about that though. One celery stalk diced finely in about a quarter inch dice. One medium yellow onion I'm using because uh, that's what I have, and any onion would work fine. You could even use red if you wanted. 
and that is diced again in a quarter inch dice. So the celery, I decided to throw it in because, so this recipe is inspired by uh, the answer on social media, which was a Facebook post about company potatoes. And also the base is my patient at my assisted living that I used to own way back when, when I was a nurse. Um, she used to tell me about the company potatoes that she made. And I was like, all right, glad what's in them. And she told me all the ingredients that she put in them, which I'm putting most of those in. And she would beat them up with a mixer. And she's like, you make them ahead of time. You put them in the refrigerator. Then you just, you know, warm them in the oven or you can pop a topping on them if you like. And they were delicious. But another resident of mine, his family was from Pennsylvania and they made a different version of what we would call a dressing or a stuffing and it's called filling. And it was a combination of mashed potatoes and stuffing. And it was amazing and they put celery in it. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna add that to this. And it's amazing, it's delicious, I love it. It's optional, you do not need it. You don't need the onion either if you don't want it. All right. I know I talk too much. All right, now one thing that I'm gonna put in here is a piece of raw bacon. That might seem weird and I'm putting it in whole, but I will be removing it. It's for flavor, okay? And it's so good. Now, one of the toppings that I'm gonna do because I couldn't decide which one was better, so I'm doing both. One of the toppings I'm gonna do has bacon bits in it. So you could technically cook your bacon and then pull it out and use the bacon grease. But I just find this gives the best flavor. I like to cook my bacon bits on the stove in a little frying pan for complete control over how they cook. So this is how I'm doing it. All right, one stick of butter, which is a half of a cup of salted butter. You could use unsalted, that would be fine. Eight ounces of cream cheese. And yes, these are going in right now, which is kind of crazy, right? And you know what I forgot? Okay, don't do this. <laughs> I always do this, right? All right, I have one third of a cup of chicken stock that you want on the bottom of the pot, not on the top, because I want as much on that bottom as possible, because guess what? This is the only liquid that we are using to go under pressure. And boy, I made a big mistake here by putting those potatoes in first. So I am gonna fix that right now by sort of moving them around, getting that on the bottom, and you know what else to help? I'm gonna put the butter down so it will melt on the bottom, and that's gonna help a little bit to get that moisture that we need. Because honestly, this pot takes a little bit of time to come to pressure, and when I was testing it, I was a little nervous that it wouldn't come to pressure. But it did, and it works really great, and you don't have to strain the potatoes. If that makes you too nervous, if you're you know, afraid you're gonna get the water notice, which is always a possibility when you're being a little chintzy on the liquid and cooking something with starch. So if that bothers you, if you're worried about it, you can definitely add a little bit more liquid, but your potatoes are gonna be a little bit more runny. So what I would do in that case is I would cook the potatoes, leave everything else out, except for the onions and the celery, and then add in your cream cheese and your sour cream and your butter afterwards, because you might need to drain off the extra liquid. But I found that one third of a cup is perfectly fine. So that was a quarter cup of sour cream. So what we have is eight ounces of cream cheese in there. We have a quarter cup of sour cream. We have a half of a cup of butter, one stalk of celery finely diced, one medium onion finely diced, three pounds of potatoes, and one third of a cup of chicken stock and one thick cut bacon strip. Okay, so I'm gonna warn you right now. When we get done pressure cooking, this is going to look horrible. The cream cheese is gonna split. The sour cream's gonna look curdled. It's going to look horrible, but don't worry about it because it all comes together when you mash them and it's delicious and it's so much easier to do it this way because you don't even have to bring your cream cheese or your butter to room temperature like you would if you added them after the fact. All right, so put your pressure lid on. I'm not putting this cheese in. I'll tell you about that in just a minute. All right, put your pressure lid on. You wanna go to high, we're gonna go to seven minutes. Hit start, make sure the valve in the back is to the sealed position. It is gonna take a little bit of time to come up to pressure. And I could get the water notice, I don't know. I mean, I didn't in my test batches, but that doesn't mean anything. I could always get it, you could get it, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I'll just add a little bit more liquid and keep going. 
Once it goes the seven minutes, I'll do a five minute natural release and then we will get to adding in the cheese and these delicious toppings. And the toppings were based on the comments that I got about things that should be in them. And one of them is frosted flakes. I know, it sounded so weird. It's delicious. I was getting a little bit nervous there. It took quite a bit of time. I would say maybe 10 minutes, if not a few minutes longer than that, for the pin to pop up. But now I'm feeling pretty good. So we were able to build the pressure. That means that little bit of liquid in the bottom was enough to put the pot under pressure. Now this is the six and a half quart. If you're using the eight quart, you might wanna add another two tablespoons, okay? Just to make sure that you have enough. Of course the butter melts, so that adds to the liquid and that's gonna help things along. And we started our countdown. So now I'm really confident that we are not going to get the water notice. Uh, it's possible, but I really don't think so. All right, so let it go for the seven minutes and then we will do a five minute natural release and then we will add in some cheese. <laughs> All right, so let's see. It took about two minutes for the pressure to release. I didn't get any sputtering or anything. That's the reason why I do the five minute natural release to kind of let everything settle down in the pot so you don't have a bunch of starch uh, spewing out of the valve. All right, now we can open up the lid, do that away from you, because it is going to be steamy. All right, so look, you can see, I told you it was gonna look horrible. Do not worry about it. Also, look at all the liquid in there now, okay? So that is good and it will come together pretty well. So now you wanna take some sort of a masher and just sort of go through the potatoes. Now, for some reason, they're not done enough and they're not mashing up easy. You can turn on the sear saute for a little bit and kind of keep heating them up. You can't go back under pressure at this point. I don't think you'd be able to build the pressure. All right. Now there are a few little areas on these potatoes that I'm seeing that um, got a little brown on the bottom. That does not bother me at all. I happen to love it. Oh, you know what? I forgot to take that bacon out. Let me go ahead and grab that. I do not leave that in. Um, I mean, the texture would be all wrong. I usually take it out before. Oh, all right. We're gonna improvise here so I don't have to dirty another bowl. I'm gonna put in one of the toppings, which is uh, half of a cup of crushed potato chips. Put that right in there. All right, so let's get back to this. So I don't like the texture of like cooked, like soggy bacon. So that's why I don't crisp it and then put it in the pot or I, and I don't leave that in. That's just a personal preference. All right, now these are not gonna be totally creamy. They're gonna be a little bit on the chunky side. If you don't like that, then I recommend removing it from the inner pot unless you're using stainless steel. And then you can you know, blend them with an immersion blender or you could use a hand beater or anything you want. Now look at how kind of, I mean, they're not like soup or anything, but they're not real thick. That is exactly what, how you want them, okay? And that is because they will bake down as you uh, put on the topping and you put it on the bake roast function. Or if you were gonna make these ahead of time and then put them into casserole dishes, you have plenty of available liquid uh, to be able to bake them in the oven without them drying out. All right. Now, I didn't put any garlic in this recipe, which is kind of interesting because I almost always use garlic, but I just didn't and I didn't find that it needed it, but of course you could add that in. All right, now, company mashed potatoes are indulgent. They are a once in a while type of mashed potato. So add cheese, we have to add cheese. This is one cup of sharp cheddar that is finely shredded. That's from the bag. Uh, you could shred it yourself. You could use whatever cheeses you want. And now just mix that in. Or you could omit the cheese if you want. It does allow the potatoes to thicken up a little bit. So I like to use it. Plus it tastes good. All right, so let's get those in here and just let them sit. You can keep it on, keep warm. It's no problem. Oh my gosh, look at how good they look. I'm just gonna leave those right in there. Now there are a few little pieces of that bacon because I was mashing it up that got in there. I'm not gonna worry about that at all. 
All right, so let's get to these toppings. I'm using two, I'm gonna use two different toppings. So I'm gonna actually split this in half and do one topping on one side and the other topping on another. You could do that or you could pick which one you think you're gonna like the best. But let me tell you, they are totally different and they are hard to choose between. They are both so good. All right, so the first one starts with a half of a cup of crushed potato chips, just roughly crushed. About six to eight, probably eight Ritz crackers. That equals about a half of a cup. Put that in there. And then the other ingredient is one ounce of Parmesan cheese that is freshly shredded. And just mix all that up. And that's the one topping. All right, let's get this cheese stirred in. Oh my gosh, they look so good. Oh my goodness. All right, that looks good. Slightly chunky, which is the way that I like them. All right, so what I did was I took a little paper towel and I wiped around the edges here uh, to remove some of the extra potatoes. You don't have to do that. I did that because once I put the topping on and put the lid down, it, it's good they're gonna get really brown and they don't look, that doesn't look very good, but you don't have to do it. I didn't do it on my test batches. No worries there. All right, so now we're gonna put this over half. Actually, this made a little bit more than I really needed. You probably could have used these ingredients to cover the entire thing in a thin layer. So that's just a little bit more than what I actually need. All right, topping two, and this is, this one will blow your mind and it is so good. Frosted flakes, I know it's so crazy, but somebody mentioned it in a comment and I got to thinking, she said it was her grandmother's secret to company potatoes. And I've been thinking about using like a cornflake or something like that. And I thought, you know, I bet that sweetness from the frosted flakes with all of these savory ingredients would work really well. So I was like, I'm gonna try that. And it was so good. So this is a half of a cup of uh, frosted flakes. And I just break them up a little bit. Not too much. Now, you could put this on as is, but what I wanted to do was balance the topping flavors with some more savory and saltier ingredients. So that's where the bacon comes in and the green onion. Now, the green onion goes down first. So I put that down just all over there. It's one green onion that I diced up and I put that down first. All right, and then I put in a quarter cup of that sharp shredded cheese and two bacon, this is actually one and a half bacon slices, but one to two is fine, that are cut up, sauteed into like little homemade bacon bits. Mix that up and that goes on the other side. If you wanted this over the entire top, you would need to double all of the, the ingredients, because this did not make enough uh, for a whole thing We're covering. In fact, I'm a little uneven, aren't I? That's okay, that's all right. So I have a little bit more of, a little bit more of this topping than that topping, which is a shame because I really prefer this topping, but Jeff couldn't decide. He thought they both were fantastic. All right, one more thing I'm gonna put on top. Again, I said these are indulgent. And that is the bacon grease that I used, or that was left over after I did, uh, after I cooked those bacon bits. And I just pour it right over the top. It's about a tablespoon. Because this topping does not have as much fat in it as this does. I mean, there's the fat from the cheese, but the Ritz crackers are more buttery and things like that. So I was afraid that the corn flakes, frosted flakes, I was afraid that the frosted flakes might burn, so that's why I added that bacon grease. It's probably optional. All right, let's go ahead. We're gonna take the bake roast function down to 300 degrees. 
You wanna go on a low temperature here and 15 minutes is what we want. And I found that that time and temperature worked really well where we got all the cheese melted and the topping brown, but nothing was burnt. And ooh, just wait, it's so exciting. It's so delicious. All right, time is up. Let's take a peek. Looking mighty fancy there for the company. Oh my gosh, looks so good. Now it's time to dig in. Now this, you could set here and leave it for a while. You could per turn back on the keep warm to keep the mashed potatoes underneath warm and the topping will be fine. Just leave the lid open, which you would have to do if you had it on keep warm, so that you don't trap in steam and then uncrisp the crispy topping. All right, so let's go ahead and dig in. I'm gonna try a little bit of both. Oh, look at that. A little bit of both of the toppings. You can kind of see my preference. I lean towards the Frosted Flakes topping a little bit more. So let me just grab just a little bit here of the other kind. All right. Oh my gosh. Oh, I got a messy plate. Oh well, no big deal. All right, let's go ahead and try this. This is the Ritz cracker with the Parmesan and the potato chips and these delicious mashed potatoes. Mm. That Parmesan balances it so well. And it's kind of like, I would say, grown up a little bit. So this is a nice grown up side. Delicious. All right, let's get this side with the Frosted Flakes. Mm. Hands down my favorite. That little bit of sweet with the saltiness of the bacon and then the green onion and the, the cheddar cheese, all of it works perfectly with these mashed potatoes. So if I could only pick one topping, it would be this one. But I love this one too. So that's the great thing, right? You don't have to pick. You could do a casserole or do it in the Ninja Foodie like I did and split them. And then you have the best of both worlds. You can try a little bit of the more grown up adult version and then the fun Frosted Flake version. The potatoes are also fantastic without any toppings. So if you didn't wanna go to that extent, you know, and put the toppings on it, don't worry about it. You can make the mashed potatoes just like I did with that before I put the topping on. Put them on keep warm, put them on low slow cook, put them in the refrigerator till the next day, and they're gonna be fine to reheat. The beauty of these company mashed potatoes is they're not gonna get real hard and dry because they are a little bit more liquidy to begin with. Um, so they're perfect for reheating, they work great, and when, this is a little tip I'm gonna give you because I did it last night, when you are all done with a nice dinner that you made and you have leftovers, you can use the Ninja Foodi to steam them and, the, and steam crisp is what I did. So what you do is you get an eight inch Fat daddy -O pan or whatever kind of pan, fits about two servings of everything. So you can put whatever your main meal was. In this case, you know I'm making Thanksgiving recipes. So it was turkey. So I had turkey with the skin on, turkey breast. I had a little bit of stuffing. I had a little bit of these mashed potatoes and I didn't have a vegetable, isn't that horrible? But I didn't. And then I steamed it in the Ninja Foodi for about 10 minutes. And then I put the crisping lid down. Amazing. Dinner was like ready, one pan ready in no time at all, and it was absolutely delicious. So that's a little trick. They heat beautifully with steam, and then a little bit of crisping on the top. As always, make it yours, make it delicious, and keep it real.